This is a trip. It's basically a gigantic pizza box. It's got a big honking head, a tiny little frame, a little short frame. It's got drum lugs, like an actual drum, like an acoustic drum set, and this huge head stretched over the entire thing. So that's an Irish frame drum, or Boron is what it's referred to as. And what this thing is, basically, is this really cool, kind of soundy tribal drum sound that you put your hand on the back of this thing and you wedge this sucker between like your leg and your chest like this and you play it with this thing called a tipper. It's basically just a glorified stick and there's a ton of different styles of this thing. And you strike it up and down and you sometimes you rock it back and forth like this to create these really amazing sort of cool drum beats with all these intricacies. And there's some amazing Boron players out there. But it's pretty clear that even though I'm Scottish and Irish, I'm never going to be an amazing Boron player and certainly never going to be good enough to be able to use it in a real song. So instead, what we're going to do today is we're going to sample it. We're actually going to make a bunch of different recordings all the way around the drum, loud ones, quiet ones, different strikes. We're going to record the rim shots around the edge of it, all that stuff. And then we're going to load those samples into a drum sampler. And that's going to allow us later to manipulate it either by a keyboard or in software to play the rhythms that we need to play that we're not good enough to play. So we're going to do that by recording that by striking it with different things. A mallet, we're going to do it with our fingers, we're going to get all these different textures and we're going to load them in and get ready to go that way at this sampling session. So special shout out to my buddy Shannon Ames for helping us out and leaving this here for us to play with. He's an incredible musician. If you're ever in Europe, please check him out. You can get the link up there, and we're going to detail the entire process from start to finish, all right? Okay, this thing has got some of the weirdest tones. It's got these huge, boomy tones that kind of, like, resonate out. So we have this thing suspended at the moment so we can get as much resonance out of the shell as we can. And remember that all we need is one hit each, and it doesn't have to be a performance like a rhythm. It doesn't have to be anything like that because all we're really after is just the best possible hits for each tone because then we're going to take all those tones and we're going to stack them up with different velocities and make it a playable instrument in software. Cool. All right, we're all set up. We've got the mics ready to go. The isolation booth is quiet. We've got the drums suspended, and we're ready to do some sampling and recording. Now, you'll notice that we're using a small diaphragm microphone. That's because we don't want it hyped or colored. We want the best possible, most accurate and flattest recording for what we're going to do because we're going to affect the sounds and everything later. Right now, what we're really looking for is a true recording. So we're going to open up our DAW. Uh, this particular one, we're going to use Cubase. For You can use any digital audio workstation, but we're using Cubase because its particular sampler, the Groove Agent, has a lot of really powerful integration with Cubase itself. But it can be any DAW, oh, Pro Tools, Sonar, Cubase, Nuendo, Studio One, uh, Logic, Ableton, Motu, Fruity Loops, any multi-track DAW, and any software sampler or drum sampler. So Contact, Hallion, you know, Reason, uh, Apple Structure... Mach 5, any of those will work great. All right, let's start by arming the first track and our multi-track recorder and recording the lowest velocity performances first and then working up to the loudest. So we're gonna start recording from the softest hits. And these just need to be clean. So we just need a few of each one. You want the note to die out completely because you wanna be able to edit all of those lengths and frequencies later. All right. Okay, that sounds good. We're gonna mute the track and continue on. And these are gonna be a little bit harder now because we want velocities that start really quietly and then get louder as we go. So this will be a little louder velocity. Make sure you allow the note to die out completely before you do each consecutive strike. Let's try a couple of rim shots because we want to get a bunch of different versions and sounds off the instrument. So here's a few rim shots. We're going to arm the track first. All 
All right, now we're going to pick another location to try the rim shot with. This will be the same idea, but a different part of the drum. All right, now let's move on to something a little different than that. All right, so we've got a lot of different kinds of sounds and variations to work with. Even if we don't use all of these variations and sounds in this particular sampling session, it doesn't matter because you may not always have the instrument to resample. You may not have the same exact scenario, not the same microphones. So anytime you're doing any kind of sampling work, you want to make sure you get as much stuff as you think you're ever going to need. All right, so we've got a bunch of different kinds of sounds to work with. Now what we want to do is we want to call up Cubase's drum sampler. So we've got this recording of several cascading velocities, starting from the quietest right here. This is going to be the quietest of all the velocities, all the way up to the loudest velocity down here. And we want to put all those into a sampler and then make that into a playable instrument. How we do that is we call up our drum sampler. And again, this could be anything that you have. This could be contact. It could be whatever. We're going to be using Cubase's Groove Agent because it's incredibly powerful for what it can do. It starts up in sampling mode, which is cool. So it's already ready to go. And we're simply going to grab this very lowest velocity. We're going to drag it down here on this pad. And so from this point on, it's already playable. The difference, though, is it's only playable at one velocity. We can make it louder and quieter, but we can't make it a different sample altogether. All we need to do to do that is to grab another sample that's a little bit louder and drag it right onto the top of the pad. And you can see here, it's already auto-mapped the two velocities together for us. And if we wanted to change that relationship or how fast they change, we could drag that little slider and it would do it for us automatically. All right, so we've got the two different velocities. Now when I play it quietly, it's going to play that, and it's going to play the next loudest one when I get up there. But I want even more than that. I want varieties of that. I'm going to, I'm going to continue this process and drag every one of these samples onto the pad. And it's going to automatically map those for me. All right, so now what I have is I have all of these velocities ready to play. If I play it quietly, I get the quiet velocity. But the louder I play it, now I have a, a completely velocity switched instrument that's unbelievably accurate and articulate at every strike point. All right, so remember those rhythms and stuff that we had done, uh, thinking that we might need them later? Well, now we don't because now we can play it right here on the pad. And we can play them with different velocities. And that's huge, hugely important in this particular instant. All right, so we've got a bunch of different sounds to play with. We're going to continue this process and grab, say, some hand slaps. Let's get a couple different versions of those to play with. All right. We've got rim shots down here to play with, so let's grab let's grab some hand swipes too because we had done some of those and those sounded kind of cool. We could use those as a rhythm. All right. We even have some swirls to play with. So you kind of get the idea. All right, that's it. We've got a completely playable instrument with all of our samples loaded. We've got velocity switching happening automatically. We have the ability to build patterns and using all these different varieties of sounds. Just about anything we can get out of that drum is now on a playable instrument. And this is true of any of the drum samplers that you use, be it Contact or Groove Agent. In this case, most samplers have this ability or a lot of this ability. And this is available in any song from this point on. So even if you're not sure what you're going to need, it's all right here. All we need to do from this point, open up a MIDI track and lay down the part that we need.